so great. He's so great. He's so great. He's awesome. Hallelujah. How many know that he's awesome? Hallelujah. God, I thank you for being the God of my life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh.
Straight into the word of God. Let us stand on our feet as I welcome Apostle Bobby Johnson all the way from Trinidad. I mean, sorry, Michigan. <laughs> Michigan. Amen. From Divine Grace Ministry. Amen. Come on, let's type our hands and welcome the man. Get the mic. Welcome the man of God. Amen. I don't need no bio. They come here almost every year before COVID. Man of God, come on. God bless Amen. you. Amen. He, he, I kind of laughed when he said uh, Trinidad because I, my wife and I have been to Trinidad a couple of times. Uh, uh, we ministered there for uh, Pastor Margaret. We can't remember her name. Her house way up on the, on the top there. And then we, uh, Bishop um, Andrew John. Yes, uh, several churches in, in that area. When we got ready to go home, uh, they uh, acknowledged my wife was American citizen. And I'm on the plane, and they said, where you go? And I looked behind me because I was like, I know he's not talking to me. He said, you get off the plane. You, you can't do you." You don't have a visa. I said, I'm an American citizen. And he, he looked at me and he said, give me identity. So I, I took my passport out, everything out. And he said, okay, give it to me. We get off the plane. I said, I'm not getting off this plane. <laughs> and I'm not giving you my passport. I'm not giving you, uh, I'm on this plane. The, the captain is responsible for me. And, and 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 I am on the manifest. If I get off this plane, I don't know what you're gonna do with my uh, passport. But it was it was a unique operation. We, that was the third time and the last time we've been uh, there. But I I I was often getting like they felt like I was a Trinidadian. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, uh, it was a it was a unique experience. So soon as he said, all the way from Trinidad, my wife and I looked at each other, and, and then you got up and said, all the way from Trinidad. I said, they still giving me that Trinidad hook. <laughs> Amen. So we are happy to be here with you, uh, my very lovely wife. Just for a minute, Prophetess Mary Johnson. We uh, we often minister together. She's ministering tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to try to do this quickly so we can uh, kind of prophesy. We use the prophesy together. And so we'll do a little bit of that. But I, I'm here on assignment. I have my assignment. And I, it was something because I was already in the place of the assignment. When he said divine manifestation, I said, no, you didn't. You know, so I was really excited. And so I just want her to greet you for a, a, a moment. Amen. Amen. 
God bless you. Amen. I am so excited to be here. Amen. I know the Lord is going to do a new thing in your life on this weekend. Amen. Because the Lord said this is a time of the now. Come on. Many of you are in your now season right now. Come on. You don't hear me. You in your now season. So the Lord is about to do some great and mighty things. Amen. I always say purpose. Call. Chosen. You are. Come on. You better recognize and know who you are. Before you was created on this earth, there was purpose on the inside of you. And the Lord wants you to know that he's about to do a thing, something that you cannot even begin to imagine. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Because to walk into the purposes of God, to walk into the destiny of God, you got to know who you are. You got to know he created you for such a time as this to move out into the purposes that he created ate it you for on this earth come on come on well, well see uh, i thought i would do that just so you get a taste of what's coming tomorrow you know just give you we're gonna get you out in a real good time so you'll be fresh when you, when you come in here t- tomorrow Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for family. Lord, we feel at home because this is family. God, we thank you for what you're going to do in this house. We thank you for this people. They are great people because they are your people. And God, the purposes that you have put in them, Lord, this day, this hour, new manifestations, new administrations, and new destinations of purpose that you are calling them to. God, as they walk in your word, as they meet the standard of the word, cause the accelerated manifestation for your glory. And we call it done in the mighty strong name of Jesus. You can be seated in the house of the Lord. Divine manifestation, seven phases of divine manifestation, seven phases that we look, we know that God, uh, uh, the number of perfection, there are three perfect numbers, three, the number of Trinity, of course, one, Theos, is the almighty and awesome, but the, 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 the numerical order, perfection numbers, three, seven, and ten, three of the Trinity. The, uh, uh, seven, the creative power of perfection that God moves in, and ten is cyclical perfection. It's numerical order of cyclical perfection. Ten and any other number advanced, uh, just add a zero, and it advances tenfold. Ten times ten, a hundred, ten times a hundred, a thousand, ten, ten times a thousand, ten thousand. And you can go on and on and on infinitum because it is a perfect cyclical order. So God is is letting us know in, in these seven phases that there is a creative order of manifestation that we walk in and we don't just manifest uh, randomly. Come on somebody. You you, you know you you manifest uh, as a result of purpose and intention. There is, God has purpose and it's intentional. And so when we come to the place of the understanding of our purpose, we are on the threshold of our manifestation. And so God, he said, let the people know that there is a blueprint. There, there's an anatomy of a manifestation, of divine manifestation. It, what it looks like. What are the characteristics? What are the attributes? Uh, you know, because there's all kind of manifesting now. It's a, you know, we, it's some, you know, you've seen some people manifest. Come on, somebody. Come on. They're all kind of manifesting. But, but divine manifesting, come on, is ordered by God. It is fashioned and designed with purpose, with intent. To bring you to a expected end. All right? And so he said, give them the, the insights and the, of what the characteristics and the attributes uh, look like. And so the first thing we need to understand is plan and purpose. Plan and purpose. Now, when God gives us a, a plan, 
The first thing he's going to do is give us some instructions. The first thing he's going to do is to give you the high and the how to's. And so once you get the instruction, now you got to follow directions. Okay? And so you get instruction, and then God is going to see if you'll be willing and obey so you can eat the good of the land. See, a lot of people, some people willing, but they can't obey. You know, they, 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 oh God, I will, I wish you would, and all that kind of stuff, but you must obey. And so if we can obey him, now we qualify to walk in his will. And when you're walking in the will of God, manifestation becomes a a part and parcel of your portion because you get in the secret place of the Most High God, as it talks about in Psalms 91. In the secret place of the Most High God, there is refuge. In the secret place, you don't have to fear. In the secret place, truth is your shield, your buckler. In the secret place, God covers you. So whatever comes, you're covered. Whatever conflict, many other afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. We, he always causes us to triumph. And so because God always causes us to triumph, we have an expectancy of flow that says we'll walk in victory. We, when, when, when God calls you to triumph, it starts a rhythm and a flow of expectation. Winners expect to win. Come on, somebody. Winners ain't playing to keep from losing. Come on, somebody. Winners plan to win. Come on, somebody. Winners have an attitude, I'm a winner, and I'm going to win. Come on, somebody. I'm a winner right now, but I'm going to have some more battles, and I'm going to win them too. Now, winners have a different mindset because they have a champion spirit. David had a champion spirit. He didn't care what, what, what Goliath had to say. He, he didn't have any problems with, with showing up. His own brothers talked about it. What you doing here with your naughty self? You know, they, why, why are you here? Why are you not with those sheep? Never mind he was following the instructions of the father. And see, if you can't follow the instruction of your spiritual father, you can forget about, oh, you don't like this, you don't want to hear this, but I got to, got to, got to tell it. If you can't follow the instructions of your spiritual father who is given to cover you, you you don't have a hard time following the instructions of God. So the anatomy of of manifestation has particular characteristics and it plan and purpose. Now, if you can be obedient in the instruction, God will show you the plan. Look at somebody and say, you ain't getting it all. See, see, we think we getting the whole angelata, not been the half. If you got it all, you mess it up. If you got it all, you be you you'll be running uh, 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 without purpose or government. See, government is important. You need proper government when you are a person of purpose in order to establish right function. That's why we got so many dysfunctional people. Dysfunctional and malfunctional. And some of them are very gifted. But gifts and callings are without repentance. They're very gifted, but they have got out of alignment with God. I preach divine alignment brings strategic increase. The first time at this church. And God began to flow. During the pandemic, we had our greatest year. We, we had overflow. We had overflow. Uh, we, we was rolling and people said, well, uh, you know, I know your back. My back ain't against the wall. Well, I know it's, I know it's been rough. I said, man, it's, it's just, I don't know what, you know, I can't testify to what, what's going on in, in other places. 
But it's for me and my house. We gonna serve the Lord, and it's good. Hallelujah! It's 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 going great. I, I was he. God told me, he said, look, this is what I want you to do. And so I'm getting the instruction. Whenever God gives me the instruction, I, I'm, I'm a writer. I write stuff down. Uh, I, I, I was in here, and God gave me some more stuff about this house. So I said, oh, my goodness. I, 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 got, I started writing again. I thought I was ready. But, see, when you obey God, God going to give you a refined message. He, he'll give you part of it but it, it's it's going to be refined but you can't have it all because if you got it all it, it, the enemy get in it he'll mess it up see we forget Noah preached 120 years after God told him it's going to rain you know 120 years and nobody got saved the folks that was with him was already God had already chosen people to go into the ark so what God was going to implement in his totality was, was not completely shared with those persons. They, they were mixed breeds. Mm, you see what you're talking about? They, see, y'all think transgender is new. That ain't new. The devil, uh, the angels went into the daughters of men and, and Nephilims were produced and they were no longer a pure blood. They were part demon. Uh huh. And that's why their thoughts were continuously evil because they had been sired, you don't hear me, by evil fathers. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. So, because of that, that, that demonic DNA started manifesting. And their thoughts were continuously evil. And God said, I got to deal with this. I got I, I got, I got to deal with this. I got to wipe all of this out. Okay? And so they were trans. They left their original state. Come on. Remember the angels did. And they went into the daughters of men and produced a hybrid. Oh, y'all don't like me. Don't. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and, and as a result of that, God said, this is not what I intended. This is not my destiny. This is not my purpose. This is not my will. And he dealt with it. And so that lets us know God is very intentional about his plan. He's very intentional about his purpose. And if he has to wipe it out and start over, he'll do it. He'll do it. And so we see that in the getting the anatomy we, we get a plan and purpose. Now, plans, God will give you from mountain peak to mountain peak. You know, you got some stuff in the valley you're going to have to deal with. See, see, the mountain peak gets you, hey, hey, and you're running, hey, hey. And, you, and you know, because the mountain peak experience is pure accident. Oh, you, I mean, but, but the valley. David said, yea, yeah, though I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil. Which lets you know you're going to have a date with some valleys. You know, see, we try to tell, well, not me, but a lot of folks try to make you think every day is going to be sunshine, lollipops, and no, 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 no. It's not going to be sunshine and lollipops. You're going to have some warfare if you're a real soldier. Why do you think he said endure hardness as a good soldier? The good soldiers is fighting. What's wrong with we fighting a good fight of faith? Faith is a fight and it's a good fight. You don't hear me. The reason it's a good fight is because we win. When you're winning, boy, you you ready. When you're winning, when you win. <laughs> Look, uh, y'all remember Ali. When Ali was winning, he stopped fighting. Start doing all kinds of punches. Then that hand. Come on, what was that about? And he enjoyed the fight. Faith is a good fight. 
And when you fight it right, that you enjoy the victory. Don't tell me David didn't enjoy the victory over Goliath. Don't tell me that the Bible said he hastened, he ran to him. Come on. This guy in the desert, in the valley, talking about everybody, talking about the king, talking about the armies. They all hiding out. I want y'all to get this picture. Them folk were scared. The armies of the Lord, Israel. The king wasn't king in that day. He was in the tent. Hiding out. But not David. David chastised him. And said, you ain't going to give my flesh to the birds. I'm giving yours to the birds. I'm taking your head off the thing. And then he said, enough talking. He started running. Start running with his five smooth, smooth stones. Now, I want you to get this because I'm still talking about how things manifest. David had an intent that was rooted in God. David specialized in the purpose of, of God to such a degree that he was after God's own heart. He had a, what you want me to do? What's next? What are we going to do? What, what, what now, God? And so once you are obedient to the instruction and you follow the direction, then God will begin to show you the plan. And once you begin to go in the right direction with the plan, now God begins to empower you. See, transition enables you. But transformation empowers you. See, it's better to be transformed than to be transitioned. Because you can go over here and, and, and shout. And you can go over there and shout. But when the Holy Ghost transforms you, you, you don't even have to go. You can just send the word like Jesus did. And healing comes. Because he transformed. And so the purpose... Uh, the plan that you get now leads you to the power of God. Now, the power of God is connected to the purpose of God. And so the instruction phase, the direction phase is connected directly to your obedience. All right? Now, if you be willing to obey, you can eat the good of the land. All right? So, so obedience is better than sacrifice. All right. God puts high value on obedience. And so now we see the, the, the acceleration of the plan beginning to be empowered. The plan, uh, implement, uh, uh, implementation phase. The plan now is being implemented. So, cause, you know, everybody got rhetoric. Everybody talking, you know. I got theories. <laughs> you ever talk to folks with real theories? They got theories. <laughs> How are you? I know I got a revelation. You did okay. What's your application for that revelation? Well, I ain't got that yet. In other words, what you going to do about it? I'm tired of hearing your rhetoric. I don't want to hear no more theories. I want you to bust a move, and I want the move that you bust to be fruitful. Then we'll talk. Now we can have, now we, how they say, we can parley. Come on, somebody. But if you just got rhetoric and rhetoric and theory and philosophy and, uh, you know, and nothing is manifesting, it's because you don't have the right application. Because revelation with application brings manifestation. And manifestation brings greater illumination. You don't have to tell nobody, look at me, look at me. Everybody be saying, look at that, look at that. You don't have to try to attract something that God 
has already given you because the anointing is attractive all by itself. Hallelujah. You go into a room where people need to be healed and you lay a hand. People getting healed, you don't have to say, uh, come on, come on. They'll, they'll line up on you. They'll line up on you and you, and you, and you can't stop it. It's like, I've been to places where we started off and God started doing miracles. And it seemed like people came off the streets. I said, this is like, wasn't that many people in here? <laughs> How did this man get this? I'm looking at people in the line and people in the seats and people in the line. And I'm like, where, where do people come from? Healing and miracles are, are attractive. They attract. The anointing attracts people. And so now we, we the plan is implemented and you get empowerment through transformation. There is an empowerment process. And if you stay in the process, you will progress. Now, the reason a lot of times people don't progress is because they do like this. They're in the process. They're out the process. They're in the process. They're out the process. They're in the, in the outer, in the outer, you know, of the process. It's like that. You see them when they jump that rope and they go. That's the way it is. You got Christians that do that. You like, is you going to jump? Yeah, I'm going to jump. How long are you going to do that? I mean, you was doing that yesterday. Oh, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm almost ready. I'm almost I, I'm just about, you know, they're going to drop the rope and people going home. You got to get in when the anointing has made room for your gift. You got to, I mean, I'm all for stirring up the gift, but you can't take three weeks in a coffee break. Come on now. It's time to roll. It's time to move in that thing. It's time to see God manifest his God. God you know, well, you got angels. You got angels waiting on you. All you got to do is just get him the word. They waiting on you. Some of them angels be like, I can't get this guy to say nothing. He don't know no word. How, if, if he just say Jesus, well, maybe I could do something with that. But he won't say nothing to empower the angel because his word will not return him void. So say what Jesus said. Say the word. Say the word. Say the word. And the angels who are the ministering spirits of the heirs of salvation will manifest that word when you speak it. And you won't be trying to, I believe, uh, uh, speak those things that's not as though they were. You'll be speaking those things. You'll be in that process. And so the plan implementation phase brings you through revelation, application, manifestation, illumination. Come on. Now you're visible so other people can see and be a witness. Because, see, when you start walking with God, God going to make room for you to be seen and glorify him. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And, and then after illumination is inspiration. Not only will you inspire others, but you'll be inspired. You can't wait for the next time. Saul sent David out for a few foreskins. He said, go get a hundred foreskins. Because I know that's going to be rough. Ain't nobody giving them up. You can't smooth on that one. David went out and got a thousand. They, they, David got so hooked on Doing the work of God and showing the power of God that his motivation was to please God. And how many know when you please God, no good thing will he withhold from him that walk upright. God, you know, 
God started pouring out on him. God starts standing with him. So when the plan phase of implementation comes, now we see something happen. We see power. We see process. We see progress. And we see purpose. And we see it in that order. We, the power begins to be accelerated. The momentum begins to, to build. You now have the, the right process. You're not trying to figure it out. You just got to be faithful to the process. And then you begin to see the progress. And I don't know about you, but when I begin to see progress, you better look out, Jack. I, 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 you know, I played basketball in college. And, and you know, sometimes when you have, have not been doing so well, but then momentum switches and changes, you know, and they say, oh, we got momentum. Everybody walking around, you know, before it was like, folk got uh, hurt ankles, hurt legs, everything, you know, you know, they need some water, <laughs> you know, oxygen, we got in here, oxygen, we got, who got the oxygen, everything. Somebody, somebody hits a jump shot, somebody dunks, somebody steal the ball, and all of a sudden ain't nobody tired. Don't nobody want to come out. Momentum has shifted, and momentum is powerful. And so when you're riding the flow and the power of momentum, you'll start talking, boy. You'll start, you'll, you'll start talking victory. You'll run past your man and say, oh, we got you. You got it. Oh, you, 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 it changes your whole ethic because you're in momentum. And when momentum, as they say, swings or shifts, you can get really beside yourself. See, that's when you got to watch it. God started doing a lot of good things for you. You know, and you start saying stuff and, and it manifests. And now you are in the throes of momentum and you are so excited about the joy of the momentum that you start feeling like, hey, I got this thing. Trouble. That's why whenever there's high momentum, you need to measure. You need to measure to make sure you're still on the right track. Whenever there's high momentum, with momentum, there's necessity for measure. Measure says, am I still where God put me? Am I still in the applications? Have I let my flesh get in the way? Have I let the attaboys and go heads now change me to where I'm no longer moving on God, but I'm moving on the attaboys. I'm moving on the, amen, preacher. You know, because sometimes people say, amen, it ain't no amen. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. And so when you measure, the standard of the measurement, the plumb line, is the word of God. And when you measure, it always humbles you. And that's a good thing because humility is the first step to the summit of purpose. You got you to gotta be humble. That's your first step. That's humility will put you in right position to be exalted. The abasement through your humility now draws the attention of Almighty God because he elevates the abased. A proud look, I think, saying. But humility attracts his favor. See, if you want, you know, I don't know, she always talking about he got favor. They talking about favor, favor, favor. I, I don't have no, if you want favor, be humble. If you want favor, be grateful. Have an attitude of gratitude. 
Uh huh. Yeah. Your whole attitude is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Folks going, what's wrong with him? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, it's ugly. It's they doing stuff to me. This ain't no thank you, thank you. Oh, yes, it is. That's really the thank you, thank you, thank you time. Because God said, be careful for nothing. But in everything, give thanks. But this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. He's saying that when you give an attitude of gratitude and say thank you, now it's not just you, it's me and you. Hallelujah. And I don't care how many faces is against you. You and me together are a majority. If the whole world stands on the right side of the street and God stands in the middle of the street, I cross over from the right side and stand in the middle with God. Because I know God and, and me together are a majority. And when you take that attitude, you have to have an attitude of gratitude. When you're thankful, it draws God to you. Remember those lepers Jesus healed? Ten of them. Only one came back. The rest of them, they, they had been lepers so long until when they got healed, they were Da, 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 da. Oh, that, that, you know, that was gone. That was gone. They was like, man, my, my skin smooth. You know, I got smooth skin too. I got a few folks I want to holler at. I ain't hollered at nobody in a long time. Only thing I said was unclean, unclean, unclean. And now I'm clean. Let me holler at you. See that? See, that's all. That ain't right. That's not right. Only one came back and said, thank you. And what did Jesus do for that one? He said, was there not ten that I healed? Why, that was only uh, one that returned. But he blessed him and gave him eternal life. See? Oh, Jesus, help me. Thankfulness will bring you into the favor of God. Thankfulness will not only attract favor, but thankfulness will cause those ministering spirits, which are the angels of God, to encamp around about you. And while the enemy is plotting on you and you saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, they have swords drawn. They 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 ready to deal with with you know they ready to fight your battles. All you need to do is just keep on saying thank you, cause those thank yous is is powerful. And don't put no praise with your thank you. Woo! You put a praise with your thank you, and and the and God Himself steps down into a throne. And inhabits your praise. Huh? He inhabits. See, we don't get that. We think this is just good mythical stuff. The devil is a lie. God steps into your praise, and He is there. And if you are a real uh, follower of God, now you worship Him. Because God is, while He's there, He's looking for those that worship Him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. And when you qualify, hallelujah, for, for as a word. See, because anybody can praise him. Come on. Anybody can praise him. Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. If you breathe, you can qualify. You can qualify. Dogs croak, dogs bark, uh, 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 frogs croak. All that is to the glory of God. Birds chirp. So anything can praise. But worshiper, whole nother category. It is worship that moves the hand of God. It is worship that causes God to not only embrace you, but to make way for your destiny. It is worship that causes the Holy Spirit 
to lead and guide you and then bring you into sonship because there's many that uh, uh, follow the spirit of, uh, of the Lord are the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what they shall be. So you're still becoming what God calls you to. Now I'm going to shatter some other problems. Well, that's just, see, that's a little bit of chauvinist of the son. It, come on, Pookie. It is not have anything to do with your gender. You hear what I'm saying? It's a spiritual application of being. And God got some women's sons. Uh-oh, y'all ain't going to like me. But they, they follow the spirit. And they, see, our, our, we don't have that kind of problem at our church. We have folk going forth. Uh, it's, the qualification is the anointing. It's the anointing. You know, I, 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 I'm not rushing you nowhere just because you male. And I'm not holding you back because you female and anointed. Hallelujah. If God make way for you, boy, I better get out the way. You get steamrolled messing with God's plans. Talking about, mm. we don't, we, we don't allow none of that. And heal. Yeah. Next thing you know, you'd be flat on your face, muzzling and tell them, oh, what? Uh, you don't want to say it'll be okay flat on your face so you can, hallelujah, honor God and stand back in the face of that adversity. So now momentum is, is the measure. Uh, it needs to be measured, and it checks the examination of the process. Uh, uh, it, 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 the measure uh, makes sure you're still in proper process. It makes sure that you're still in purpose and that you're walking at the standard of the word. And that's why he says, let a man examine himself. Because if a man will authentically and genuinely avail himself to the Holy Spirit and, and examine himself, he won't be judged. He won't be judged. And so now you're checking the, the, the and examining the process, and you come to that divine finishing grace. That divine finishing grace. See, God has given you grace to finish. And he's given you grace to finish strong. He's given you grace to overflow. He's given you the grace that's more than enough. He's given you the kind of grace that when the outpour comes, it'll be more than you can contain, but the folks traveling with you will get blessed. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. Folk will be attracted and want to be around you because they there for the overflow. You know what I'm saying? They say, well, yeah, we go. You, what you doing here? Well, we just, we just here. What you mean you just here? Don't you have somewhere to go? You know? Yeah, but I, I'd rather be here, so I'll be, it'll be all right. I'm going to just be here. Is there anything I can do? Can I serve? See, people don't understand the overflow. That's the way they act. Can, can, they know obedience attracts the favor. They know obedience attracts the increase. So they trying to serve. They try, you know, they want to be obedient. They look, they try, they be like, you know, they were like Ruth. Naomi say, go home, girl. Not me, no. Your people, my people. Your people's is my people. I don't want to go back to them more about your people. My people. Couldn't get, couldn't get rid of her. Couldn't get rid of her. I lodge where you lodge. Naomi said, I don't know where I'm lodging. Well, I'll be right there with you. I'll be right there with you where you, where, where's every that? We'll be lodging together in no man's land. Wherever you lodge. You, 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 you. She knew Naomi had something that was going to be beneficial to her. Naomi said, I ain't got no more sons to give you. She said, that's all right. 
I see prosperity on you. That's all right. I, 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 you know, I'm, 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 when the overflow come, I'm going to be right there. You ever seen somebody who's real hungry and the syrup's getting going? They, 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 they people say, oh, let me go get a biscuit. They there with them. You know, they already ready. They already ready. God is looking for people that are ready with intention. So they can move to the place of overflow. So the divine finishing grace is the ability to finish. It is the passion and the drive. See, you, so, well, this happened to my dear name, and I couldn't, look, you can be my dear sensitive, but you got to be driven by the Holy Spirit. You got to have a drive, a passion. Jesus, on the way to Galgotha to that cross, had a passion. They call it the passion of the Christ. He, man, how many times you, uh, he, 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 was, he, he, he felt like, you know, this is, man, this is hard. If they do this in a green tree, what will they do in a dry? This is hard. But he had finishing grace. He had, oh, I'm going to that here. I'm going to that hill. I'm getting up on that cross. I'm, I'm finishing my course. I got divine grace. I ain't got the grace that come from a man. No, 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 no. The grace that comes from God will cause you to finish under opposition. So what they don't like you? I got to finish my course. So what they talking about you? I got a destination and a destiny to fulfill. So what they are saying? You are not authentic. You know, when I get there, you're going to know. Passion. Driven. And you have to have joy in your passion. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Sometimes people get tired because they ain't got no joy. They murmuring and complaining. I don't like her anyway. Anybody could tell me. Anybody. I don't care who it is. But Sarah Sue. She always, she always jumping and shouting. She got something to jump about. She always praising. Make me Makes makes me sick. She's staring your demons up. That's what that is. Sometimes when people don't like you, it's called you you upsetting their demons. You upset their demons. Oh yeah, you didn't know that some demonic agents, uh huh, some undercover. Oh yeah, and you start saying Jesus, thank you. They... You say, oh oh, okay, oh. You know what we got here now? Disclosure, exposure, and foreclosure. You see what's going on now. So that passion and that drive, the joy and delight. Psalms 37 says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Why are you not delighted with him? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then murmur and complain. Do you know God hates murmurers and complaining? Oh, he's telling me to do it. I tell, you know, I, they got one more time. One more time. And I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Let your mind alone. It's already in pieces. So try to keep them together. So that, so, that, so that passion and that drive, that joy and that delight now forms a commitment. And that fifth verse says, in that same Psalm 37, commit thy ways unto the Lord and he will bring it to pass. He'll make it happen for you. Jojo Nim couldn't make it happen. Ray Ray couldn't make it. Bucky. You know, Bucky couldn't make it. I, th I thought Bucky was going to do it for me, girl. No. 
Uh uh. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You know, folk, folks folks not come stop coming to church. Say, well, I'm just you know I I'm a member. I'm still a member. I'm just but I'm just I'm working on something. I I'll be back, girl. I'm just, I'm just working on something. Okay. All right. If you have joy and you delight yourself with commitment, when you come to your challenges and your opposition, the momentum helps to stave off the, the fights of the enemy, the devices of the When you got momentum, the devil will set a gate for you and you just break right through. The gates of hell will not prevail against you because you standing in Jesus. And so you have a momentum and a building. I often say that the, the doors of opportunity swing on the hinges of oppression and opposition and is marred by the adversity or the adverse gates of hell. So Jesus said, on this rock I build my church. When Peter said, and the gates of hell won't prevail. On this word. So we're on that word, which is the word, which is Jesus. John 1.1 1, 1 said, in the beginning, is the word. Oh, y'all don't hear me. So as we stand on that word, the gates of hell can't prevail against you. So, so you can storm the gates. And when you, when you have the access, faith gives you your access. Faith says access granted. See, people bring God need and wonder why it ain't happening. God, don't you see how needy what I got to do? Fall out? Because if it do, they, they need. They tell God about I need this. I need this. And the word steady says, my God shall supply all your needs. Not plural need. Need. That means any need according to his riches and glory. So God does not, is not moved by your need. He already knows what you have need of. What moves God's hand and give you access is if it was need, we'd be watching them films where the flies crawling up on the kids' eyes. Ain't no clean water. And, you know, folk is dying. You think them people ain't got need? They, if it was on need, they would be off the charts in the need category. And God loves them people. God loves them people. But they got to bring him faith. They got to bring him faith. And so, when we are, are aware of that, then the challenges and the opposition to our access is faith. And then we come to the seventh phase is divine manifestation. And how do we realize divine manifestation? Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. God is love. God is not God just love you. God is love. That's he, the essence of who he is is love. And so the manifestation comes, divine manifestation comes out of the love of God. It is the manifesting of God's love toward his folks. Jeremiah 29 and 11 say, I know my plans toward you, that they're good and not evil, to bring you to an expected end. God said, I got great expectations for you. Jeremiah 32 and 19 talks about the, the, his purposes are great. God has great purpose. Everything that God has put in his own thoughts to do is to bring you to greatness. Proverbs 19 and 21 talks about God's purpose, no matter what goes on, his purpose will prevail. No matter what the enemy throws at you, his purpose will prevail. 
He's going to he's going to manifest. He's going to always cause you to triumph. Colossians 1 and 16 says all things created in God, heaven and earth, visible, invisible, thrones, powers, rulers, authority, all God created for the purpose of his plan. Psalms 33 and 11 uh, says the plans of God stand firm forever. Come on. Nobody changes God's purpose. Hallelujah. God, well, I'm just going to have him again. I know I was born like this. I'm trapped in a man's body. And I'm a female. I'm trapped in a woman's body. I identify as a cow. You know, that's what folks say now. It's not about how you identify. It's not how you think. I was I was born like this. Okay. okay. That's why you need to be born again. We all need to be born again. The Bible says we're shaped in iniquity. We're born in sin. Everybody, everybody then sinned and come short of the glory of God. So Jesus said, marvel not, you must be born again. So, so, so yes, I'm with you, Pookie. I understand you feel like this way, but you must be born again to see the kingdom. I'm not mad at you. Come on. But I want you to understand. I don't want nobody to pull a wool, flim flam, you bamboozle, you hood, wink you, have you running them up, talking about it's all if it's all right. It's all right. We can worship too. Yeah. You can praise too. You can praise because you got breath. But the Bible says that worship. God is seeking a worshiper that follow him in spirit, that worship him in spirit and in truth. And that other stuff is a lie. It's a deception from the pit of hell. And so we got to tell people the truth because God has caused us to be watchmen on the wall. And if we see the enemy coming from afar and we're in the tower and warn not the city, then the blood is required on our head. This is serious business. Serious business. And I love, and look, I love, I love everybody. I do. I love everybody. And, and, and I, I do for, 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 for folks that have problems. And I'm talking about any kind of problem because that's just another sin. Any kind, the same way, come on, in the same fashion. Not because I have made a distinction, but because God says bless and curse not. Because God says love them. And if you love me, you keep my commandments. So it comes down to love. I preached the message. What's love got to do with it? I'm glad you asked. It has everything to do with it. It has everything with manifesting your purpose. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. God's plans stand firm forever. His purposes in his heart throughout all generations. See, we, I'm closing with these two uh, nuggets of thought. One is we got to come to a place where we understand that thoughts generate habits. So a thought, keep on thinking about it, you're going to do it. You know, you sit up and you know, scooped out five bowls of ice cream. Come on, I just want to look at it. I'm not going to eat all that ice cream. I've been, I've been doing good. You got five bowls of ice cream sitting there and you talking about it. You know, well, it is melting. You, 
You get in a dialogue and reasoning, and the more reasoning you do, the more dominant the impression of your thought. And if you keep on thinking about a thing, you're going to do that thing. You're going to do it. So you have to discipline your thoughts so that the right behavior, the acts of actions and the deeds of doing are acts and deeds of righteousness because it's going to create a habit. So a habit and you'll reap a lifestyle. You'll start acting like that. You might as well be the ice cream man. You got a truck now. One for him, one for you. Yes. Selling a lot of ice cream, but you breaking even. Because everyone you 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 sell, you're eating one. And just getting bigger and bigger. Talking about, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I need to walk in the evening. No. Your thoughts have created a lifestyle and it's affecting your destiny, your health, your destiny is being affected. The door of opportunity is for us. The door of opportunity opens up the platforms. And if you'll be obedient on the platform, God will take you to another level. And as you demonstrate obedience, another level, another level. I, 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 I uh, subscribe to the school that I believe that there's seven dominant levels in every exchange of uh, transition of dimension. So God allow you to be on a platform. And you get to certain levels. Now you get to the seventh level, the creative uh, uh, finish, if you will. And, and, and now you, you've been in that platform. So God will open up uh, in that door. The next opportunity is becomes uh, dimensions. And see, dimensions are comprised of levels. So now you're in a new dimension of faith. And God will take you from glory to glory. That's how, that's how momentum is built. He'll take you from faith to faith, from victory to victory. You're moving in a whole nother dimension of manifested, come on somebody, manifested faith that now qualifies whom he calls, he justifies, whom he justifies, he qualifies. And if you'll be obedient, you'll get certified. And so now you come to this place and you certified in that dimension. And now God takes you to realms. And realms is a place of authority where you experience power to effectuate the purposes of God and, and, and impact the manifestations, not just for yourself, but others. This is a man of purpose and he can affect your destiny because he's in that place of realm authority that now not only these pastors, they are in that place they, they, that where they, it's not just about them. The people, y'all don't understand what pastors go through. It's not just about them. They're making sacrifices that are not appreciated. They're making sacrifices that people are scrutinizing. They don't know what you have done, what you have given up, what you are get willing to give up for the causes of Christ because you're committed. And then as soon as you step up and go to another realm, I don't think he need that. You know. So you want to ride in a 10 speed? For the duration of his life? You, you, you are, should I tell people in a minute, you weren't there when I was struggling. Leave me alone. Leave me alone in the advancing. Leave me alone. I was a logistics executive. Fortune 500 company. Always one of my Everybody told me, man, you're a pretty good driver. Them people ain't going to get there. You ain't going to get there. 
You don't have to mortgage your house. You don't have to. They told me all that stuff. If I would have processed that stuff, I never would have had it. Never would. I, I, I didn't process none of that. I said, God, I don't want to do none of that. I don't want to, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this for my children. I'm, I'm a mortgage that shelter. That ain't you. I know that. God came and showed me. Those city people, they found me. Started the company, grew it to a $20 million company. I'm not bragging because God did. Told me what to do. Told me how to do it. And some, my wife can tell you that some of that stuff was foolish. I, I, I used to tell people, if God tell you to tie a string to a can and drag it down the street, get the drag. And I said, don't, don't drag it like you did. Drag it, boy. I mean, you, I, you drag it with some attitude like mess with this can if you want to. You know, I'm dragging this can for the Lord, and I'm serious about it. I am, and that's the way I went into my business. They're not going to give you this. I went in to see folks. They first told me, they told me no. I said, well, you know, I qualified them on the loan home company, this and that. I gave them my spiel, gave them my business. Hey, I'm three years in the, um, in the industry. I'm one of the first people of, of color. I was the actual first person in my company. I understand. They, they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll call you. But God told me to let my foot try. And everywhere I would step, to pray. So I went in some places. I passed by the, I passed by the plant in Rockford because I was going to Jamesville. And I said, oh, that's a transfer plant. No appointment or nothing. Went in and said, well, you know, would it be possible for me to do this and this and that? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, so what I did, I said, well, I'll take like 20 few minutes of, uh, uh, of people's time uh, just so I can watch this plant. Uh, also, uh, I was in Puma, and I was in uh, Puma Rockford, and Puma Rockford was in Palo Alto, Florida. Okay. You know, I said, yes. I'm in there. So I see the guy. I give him my stuff, told him I was certified, the things that and showed him my plan. And he said, you know, we've been talking about this. We may need a minority carrier, but we don't have anything for you. Uh, but uh, I appreciate you stopping by. Ten minutes. No. Left. Hit another one. Hit another one. I was gone so much, my wife said to me, we had the babies were small, two of them. She said, look, you ain't leaving me. I'm going to be tried and work with you. We're going to be, we're going to be husband and wife tried. I, I said, well, hon, you know, she said, I'll just stay, I'll stay in the holodom, me and the kids. I said, okay, that'll work. So I would, I, normally I would fly, but since they wanted to go, I drove. And I went to all them cities, and then I'd come home in the evening. I'd hit Dayton, I'd hit Cincinnati, Valdez, I'd hit them all, boy, Xenia. Got business out of all of them. Came back and the phones was ringing off the hook. My operations people said, what did you do? I said, uh, I, I tried it at, at a couple of places and the Lord told me, they said, well, look, it's, it's, it's coming in, it's coming in. They gave us a few loads to handle to see how we can do. And if we did well, they wanted me to come back and talk to me about a contract. That happened over and over and over again. I had the venture capitalists, they was, they, they was laughing. They said, well, we, you know, we're not going to give you that, that, that much, and we don't want to give you this and that. We're putting up all the money. I said, look, I'm, I'm here to do a job. I'm not a figurehead. I can't be sitting around here depending on you all to do something for me. You know, I'm going to make this happen. They said, well, if you make it happen, I said, okay, then let's do a bonus program. And I set up a bonus program. See, I, 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 I remember Jacob and, and Naban. 
Yeah, I, I, I set up a bonus program based on the scriptures. And I said, if I do this, this should be my bonus. If I do this, this should be my bonus. If I do this. And they laughed. They laughed. My wife knows some of them. They laughed. They said, oh, Bobby, like your ambition. <laughs> I said, well, we just we just signed off. We signed off on it. The first year, we did a million and a half. And I didn't even, I got there in April. They said, oh, oh my, the next year we did 3.5 million. They was like, uh-oh. But what they didn't know is I had some folks in the wings that I knew. So you don't tell everybody, you know. You got to check them out to see what they're going to do. But once we signed that bonus contract, brother got to try it. And the next year, in the third year, it, we did 5.8. We roll it, and it's only been three years. They said, wait a minute, hold on. Uh, we want to give you some more stock. Because <laughs> they said, he's going to make enough money. He's just going to leave and do his. He, don't, he won't need us no more. I said, well, that's what I tried to tell y'all. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not playing with this. I'm not, I tried to. And you know, they said, well, we, well, well, well you know, we, we want to we change this up. And it, it didn't make no difference because then I got dividends on my stock. But that's what I always wanted. But if you're not going to do that, you're going to pay me. I'm not going to be running around out there for nothing. You, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna pay me. And once they start seeing me, they say, look, this, he, you know, he, he, he making a lot of profit, but he getting a lot of the profit that he making. You know, we, how can we grow the company? So they changed it, and the rest was history. We went to $20 million. And then the Lord said, go. Go. And I said, my Lord, I had built a new house for my wife, Alexis. I bought a new Mercedes. I, didn't, I built a new house, didn't sell the old house, you know, paid off the old house, and, and, and we built a house, Jack. And, and so I was like, now leave? And he reminded me of what I had told him. I heard my own voice talking to me. I said, Lord, if you give me 10 good years like this, the kind of money I'm making, you got to watch what you say. <laughs> the kind of money I'm making. See, I hadn't made that kind of money. Like that before. See, you, that's why you need to, when you get momentum, you need to measure. If I had a measure, I wouldn't have said all that. <laughs> that's how I learned about measure. I leave where and go wherever you say go. I have my kids' college money. I have, I have my stuff paid for. I leave. To the day, the Lord said, now leave. I said, now leave. I built the house in 95. He said, leave in 97. We had these new cars. I said, I said, I, truly, is this the Lord my God who's speaking to me? <laughs> but I knew who he was speaking to me in my voice. And I said, I said, Lord, I'm your servant. I do what you want. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't did this for me. I, I, you know, I'm a man of my word, and I went in and told the, my partners of venture capital, "Listen, I'm done." And they said, "What do you mean you're done?" I said, "They said you're not going to walk away from this kind of money." I said, "I don't have a choice." I said, what do you mean you don't have a choice? That preaching thing? That's what they said. <laughs> well, they used to laugh at me until I start saying stuff and God was bringing it to pass and I was benefiting and they wasn't. Then after they seen that about three or four times, they started saying, Bob, what is the Lord saying? <laughs> well, no more laughing. And what happened was I, 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 I told them that, you know, the church was, was a few years old. We planted it in 90, um, Three, it was a few years old, and it was starting to do some stuff, but it was still an act of faith. And and he said to walk away, 
And the Lord said, I want you to be totally dependent upon me. And I thought I was. I said, Lord, I am dependent upon you. He said, no. You, the name of my company was Cherokee. My, my, my dad's mom and her mom uh, were part uh, Cherokee. They were half and they married black men. And their uh, uh, parents had married the same way. And so my dad's folks was, was Cherokee. And I didn't want to call it by my name because a lot of times people find out this and then, you know, your kids go to school <laughs> with them folks. And some of them folks was working at, at them plants. And if it looked like your kids doing better than they kids, or something, it could be a problem, you know. Uh, I had a Mercedes, but I didn't drive it to GM. <laughs> I, my company car was a Cadillac. I, I, drove, a, I drove a GM car. You know, see, you, some folks just don't use wisdom, you know. And my, my kids knew and understood, you know, uh, the humility uh, uh, of the situation. And, and so they, they took up, they, took, they followed my lead. I modeled the behavior, and they knew it was for a reason. But I say that to say this. My confidence was in God. But it had to be tested. Jesus had to be tested. 40 days and 40 nights. Come on. The Bible said the spirit of the Lord drove him into the wilderness. 40 days and 40. You're going to have some trials and some tests when you go to the realms. And then after you go to the realms... And you're obedient, now there's mantles. And then when you experience mantles, now you move to a place of kingdom function. In other words, God causes you to function in kingdom in a way that expands the kingdom. I'm done. I'm going to prophesy over about, and come with me, maybe about three people. Because I think, is that clock? Yes, it's time. Come on, honey. Nine forty. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna prophesy. I'm gonna prophesy over the preacher from Trinidad, his wife. I'm gonna prophesy over this pastor. I'm gonna prophesy over this pastor's apostle. Uh, I'm gonna prophesy. And you said, mm, they getting all the first row folk. They getting the leadership. Well, that's because I know what they go through. I know, and I know what happens at Carnival in Trinidad. I went to Trinidad on Carnival. It was so hot. I went to the guy's church. He had a big old air conditioner sitting on the top of the building and no electricity to run it. So I, I, went, I thought, woo, air conditioner went in there. My fingernails were sweating. I was like... And then they, and I thought I was done. And they said, no, we got three more churches to do while you are here. So I'm rolling around. The streets is this wide. <laughs> and the cars, if you, if you hiccup, you go, er, hit the curb. <laughs> and the driver was driving like he was in the Indy 500 on them little bitty streets. I was like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I'm speaking in tongues. Because he, every time he had to get us to the next place, we the, they invited us there for carnival. I didn't understand. I learned quickly though. In fact, the time we was there, y'all might remember this: that we a preacher and his wife got accosted. He actually got shot in the mouth, and still ended up preaching. So I said, I, I, you know, they showed me. I said, that's a miracle right there. And I'm, 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 I'm preach. I'm ready to preach. And we're going down the street, and I'm, and I'm hot, and the car has the windows rolled down because there's no air, and there's four of us in there, and the car wouldn't hold but us four because we were big men. And I was sitting here, and it was a man sitting there in the same way like that, 
and the window was open, and the witch doctors, you know, the witch doctors be gone. And he was coming down the street with those little things, looked like a little broom in his hand, you know, and doing this, and then taking his hand and going, <laughs> stuff was coming out, you know, like that. I, and, and they was just driving like, what nothing. I said, man, do y'all see that cat? <laughs> they was like, oh, oh, y'all, that's just your wish. I said, no, man, that guy, that guy is here to do us some harm. I said, they said, oh, no, no, he, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. And he did that. He turned around. He came back around. He getting closer and closer to the cop. He got up on the cop. And the stuff went out the side. I said, that's it. Because the next, the next one going to be on me. And I'm not happy. I'm not having it. I said, Ros. And I started preaching. And he said. Everywhere. The stuff was there. They looked back at me. They said, well, we're going to have some service tonight. <laughs> I said, I said, y'all was going to let him come to the car? He said, well, he always, and he was talking about the men of God, the men of God, like a spirit of divination. I said, no, that's too close. That is, that is too close. I'm not going to wait till you get in my house. I'll fight you on the street. I mean, you're not, not going to tear up my house. I'll open up the car door and walk out, you know, because I can't move in there. You know, I'm all cramped in there and stuff. You know, so I, I started praying. I told my wife, I said, look, they invited us over here for carnival, and they go crazy. They, we left and went to Tobago for a while because it was too crazy. They said, well, that's why we invited you over, preacher, for, you know, because carnival, all kinds of people come. I said, man, but, you know, y'all need to tell a brother. <laughs> Yeah, y'all need to tell a brother about, you know, what's give a brother a heads up. You know, I still would have came, but, you know, I would have came with my dukes up. I would. Alpha and Omega release uh, uh, on the front side, and then we'll prophesy again on, on Sunday. Uh, the rest of you, please come back. We'll, we'll be prophesying tomorrow more, but I, had to, I have to be led uh, uh, of what to, what to do. But the Lord, but but the Lord, I heard in my spirit a spiritual dynamic is rising, and the dynamics and the power that's going to be released will be likened unto when you come together as the collective. The power is going to be magnified. Individually powerful, that's not going to change. But when you come together as a collective, there is going to be a dynamic, her dynamic dual effect. That as you go one way and she goes the other way and you come back again, it's literally people are going to be under the, the shadow, are going to begin to see, see healing. You're going to begin to see things manifest healing that, but that especially uh, you have an anointing to go in and out of countries. Yeah, and, and a lot of people don't know. That's a very, a lot of people can't do that. You know, I used to go in and out, man. They try to keep me in the country. <laughs> Won't let me go home. That'll keep you from going. You know what I'm saying? But you have an anointing to go in and out of countries and leave a deposit. And because the deposit is so visible, people say, you know, you know, we done seen some stuff. Not like this. <laughs> we we heard tell us some stuff, but we didn't see this with our own eyes. And then you have a very unique ability to just say stuff that 
nobody else can imagine or see or think. And they say, what is he talking about? Then it manifests, and they see it, and then they be like, how in the world could, could this have happened? How did this happen? And God said, you have this far been stealth. You've been like Navy SEALs, Rangers. So you get in and get out before they know you were there. <laughs> kind, of, kind of thing. Sent on a mission. But now the dynamic duel will come. It'll be very visible. It'll be very noticeable. Because now God is taking you from the revelation application manifestation to the illumination and inspiration. And when you get to illumination, it's so that many can see. Many can see and bring glory on the house. And the Lord said, daughter, he's getting ready. They already call you the powerhouse. <laughs> they already know that whew, when she gets started, you know, uh, she, it's not going to stop until she finished. But God says he's going to give you a sweeping anointing. A sweeping anointing is you will come into the house and sweep it clean. You will sweep out spirits that have been lodged in that house for decades. Generational curses, witchcraft, embedments. And you go into these places where the, the origin of their traditions is steeped in witchcraft. And you're going to sweep the house clean. And it's going to travel. And wherever you go, whatever city you're in, whatever country you're in, it's going to travel. And they, they, pastors in those places, particularly in the places where you have had, just say it, voodoo. You have had witchcraft, witch doctors. Spirits of divination, you're just going to, you know, you're not going to be nice. <laughs> you know, it take a person like you. See, somebody, God needs somebody that they're not going to be nice trying to figure out, excuse me, could I get you delivered? No. You're going in there and say, the devil out! <laughs> And it's going to happen. And people people are sitting around going to be like, <laughs> Lord, I repent. I repent. I repent. Because <laughs> they're going to feel like they could be next. And when you come together as a collective, one will chase a thousand, two will put ten thousand up. And you're going to sweep the house. And while she's sweeping, you're going to be edifying and rebuilding. It's going to be a twofold effect. And y'all going to sweep in and sweep out. <laughs> Remember the last time I was here and we ran around the church and was doing this and doing this and everybody was falling out? Yeah. The Lord said, that thing is about to hit you again. He's going to yeah. anoint your hands. And he said that he was going to begin to anoint your head. And before you know it, before you know it, you're going to just be running and hitting the heads. Mm -hmm. And the people are going to just be falling out mm -hmm. under the power. But the Lord said, truly, a lot. Of, I don't like to look at people a lot of times when I'm prophesying because I don't want to look at their facial expressions. But the Lord said that this is the time that even as my husband said, the two of you, the Lord said, one of the things he love about you is you're not scared. Right. You ain't never scared. You're not afraid. You're not afraid to say whatever he tells you to say. You're not afraid to do whatever he tells you to do. You know why I know? Because I'm the same way. A lot of times I, I sit down, I don't say a whole lot. 
But once I get that mic, whatever he tell me to say, that's what I'm going to say. Gonna, I don't care. She's going to say it I, she got to apologize. I'm going to say whatever. That, and they can be mad at me if they want because the, the Lord wants them delivered. You love people. You love the heart of people. You want to see people delivered. So that's your So when you say, Lord, well, however you want to use me to get them delivered, that's what I'm going to do. And the Lord said to tell you, I'm going to use you in some unusual ways that you have never experienced before. And they're going to say, she is unusual. The Lord said, yes, because I'm made her unusual and the Lord said I'm about you sometimes you say why do I act like that you act like that because that's the anointing that the Lord has placed on the inside of you and the Lord said there's a roar on the inside of you and the Lord said as you begin to roar Sometimes you're going to walk into the room in the discernment. You're going to be able to discern what's in the room. I hear you saying, honey, something not right. Honey, honey, I see you talking to your husband saying something not right. And the Lord said that it's because of the absurd discernment that I placed on the inside of you, says the Lord. And the Lord said, truly, it is of me. So when she tells you, honey, something's not right, listen to her. For he said that is the discernment that I placed on the inside of her. And the Lord said, man, a woman of God, he said, I'm bringing you to a place of promise. Prominence. The Lord said, that's where I'm bringing you. He said, why? Because I can trust you. Why? Because you will obey me. Why? Because you have the heart of the people. Why? And the Lord said, that's why I'm bringing you. And even the day when I was in the hotel, I don't know if it was for you. I don't know what it was for. But I told my husband, I kept getting television. 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 I don't know who is for, but that's what I kept getting. And my daughter, I got that before, and it was her. She was going, she's been doing some television stuff. And, and then it was someone else in the ministry. And they, But I was getting it, so I figure I'm in this way, in this area. So I'm figuring it's from this area. Amen. It's ministry. But the Lord said, don't you worry about it. You don't really worry about it. But sometimes people can look at you a little strange. And it's like, you know, when you, 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 you go through it. But sometimes you be like, well, what is that all about? The Lord said it's because of the anointing that's on the inside of you. And the Lord said that it is, he said he is so pleased with y'all. Y'all are fighters in the midst of adversity. People talking about you, people saying stuff. Uh, as you was telling her, family members saying stuff, saying stuff to well, your members, saying we stuff. Come on, and you just hold your head up anyway. You know, you know they talking about you. You know what they saying. The Lord said the reason that is is because of the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that rests in this house because you can get the people delivered. And so the enemy will fight against you because you have the capability of getting people delivered and set free. So he's going to fight against you. So hold your head up. You walk like you, God called you to be. So the Lord said, truly, this is a turning around season in your life. The Lord said, turning around. He said, he's turning some things around. Sometimes you hit a hard place, a tough place. But the Lord said, he's turning some situations around. He said, a reset is coming. A reset is coming. A reset is coming. A reset is coming to this house, says the Lord. A reset is coming. 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 A reset, a reset, a reset are coming. A reset. I shift the atmosphere. I shift the atmosphere. He said, A reset is coming to this house. Let's just one more thing and we're done. The Lord said, You are my peculiar treasure yes. so you're never going to fit in right. you are never, never it's never going to happen because yes. you are peculiar by design yes. and if you start doing anything different you'll be out of alignment you'll be out of alignment with God you are peculiar That's people right. say I can't put my hand on it. I can't put me. You're right. You can't put your, you better not put your hand on it. Because it's from God. Yes. In the hands of yes. the apostle and the prophet. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I just, Thank when you. I was standing there, I saw you like going in some places. So people said, there she goes. She's right there. There she goes. <laughs> it's coming. Amen. Come on, church.
Hallelujah. Come. Can we bless the Lord for Apostle and Prophetess Johnson? Awesome work. Awesome. Powerful. Powerful. Thank you very much. We appreciate the anointing that's upon each of your life. Thank you. That was powerful. Thank you. Thank you. We receive it. Amen. Come on, church. Are you blessed? Come on, let's give God praise, glory, and honor. Amen. We're going to take our tithe and offering. And also, every good thing must continue. Tomorrow, we're going to be here at 4 30. Please be here on time. So, the letter of ministration, apostle and prophetess, will minister to a lot of people tomorrow. So, be here on time. Glory to God. Amen. Ways to give on the screen. Everlasting life. CC. Glory to God. Cash up. Dollar signs on the screen. Dollar signs. Everlasting life CC. Our website. Everlastinglife.org slash give. PayPal. And Zell is the same email address. Finance at everlastinglife.org. Apostle says something about going in and out. Actually, that's my ministry. Global Apostolic. I went to Zimbabwe and came out. When nobody was traveling, God said, go. We went to Dubai and came out. We started a church. <laughs> God said, in Dubai, can you have a church in Dubai? Well, we did. Came out, was great. Something. Glory to God. The Lord uh, sent you to India. And I remember when it, it was if one of the biggest... Yes, was well, one of the biggest crusade in that particular part of India. But when you finish preaching, the Lord said, "Get out." So many times when I was preaching in some nation, God said, "Pack your load, go to the next." So I understood how Jesus would preach and then would go the same night. Yes, I would do that. Get out, go in India, another city, finish another city. Then I remember I finished. God said, start going to Australia. Whew. We thank God. It's the grace of God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Do we have our offering, our seal? Let's give generously. Glory to God. Let's sow to this ministry. Amen. Wow, it was powerful. Apostle, my God. Come on, can we bless this man of God once again? Tomorrow, you don't want to miss tomorrow. Prophetess will be ministering. Whoa, fire. Glory. Fireballs. She and Pastor Masha the same thing. Fire, fire, fire. You want the fire? Be here tomorrow. You want to feel the fire? Be here tomorrow. You want impartation of fire? Be here tomorrow. Amen, amen, amen. We bless God. We have our, our offering. Let's give generously. Remember, let's pay our tithe and our offering. Amen. This is a good soil. Great soil. Amen. Come on, let me hear it louder. Amen. It is a good soil. Amen. You've heard from the prophetess as well and from the apostle. It's a great soil. Amen. Are we ready? I'm going to bless it. Glory to God. And uh, there were several people on, uh, on the phone at the time, and I heard the Lord say that there are some people that He's going to put in their bellies to sow into this conference. And He said the, the seed should be named Divine Manifestation. Come on, the Lord spoke to you yet? Bring that seed. Let's give that seed. If the Lord has spoken to you, a special seed for the conference. Amen. 
I mean, know that it costs a lot of money to host a conference like this. Amen. God bless you. We have it. Let us stand on our feet. Awesome. Amen. Apostle. Apostle and I, we have a lot in common. We used to play basketball in college. He's a businessman. I'm a businessman. He used to do logistics, right? We had a logistic company before the conference. I mean, before the uh, COVID. Yeah, we have logistic company as well. A lot. The first time Dr. Francis connected us, we were on the phone for almost one hour. Dr. Francis said, come on, let me have my phone. <laughs> Go. <laughs> let me have my phone. Here's something you haven't mentioned about the, the, what, what you have in common. He loves his wife dearly. And guess what? Guess what, church? I love my wife dearly. <laughs> dearly. We've been married now. July, it will be 33 years. 33 years. Amen. Ah! I'm going to try to catch up. On. We're going to catch up. 33 years. Amen. And we met divinely. Maybe another time I will tell you how we met. Amen. We've been knowing now for 34 years. In July 27 will be our 33 years anniversary. Amen. Glory to God. And it's like we just got married. It's like we just got married. Amen. 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 Come on, we have our tithe, our offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for the awesome teaching, preaching. Thank you for the release of the prophetic of today. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. Mighty God, we just bless you. We thank you for all that you have done for all of us. We thank you, Father God. We are giving back from what you have blessed us with. Father, as your sa- at the same time, and give their time, pay their time, give their offering, I pray for overflow anointing to fall upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. That even in this prophecy, within these 30 days, let them begin to experience manifestations of prophetic words that have been spoken in the name of Jesus. Because say, in the last day, before they speak, I will hear. And while they are here speaking, I will hear them. Father, Bring it for manifestation in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We bless you. We exalt your holy name for day one. Thank you for what you've done today. Thank you for what you will do tomorrow. Thank you for what you will do even on Sunday. We believe we are going from faith to faith and from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are you blessed tonight? Come on, let's clap those hands and give God praise and glory. Amen. God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and the Lord give you peace. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, let it guide our heart and our mind through Christ Jesus. And the church of Jesus shout, Amen.